Hello everybody and welcome to a very special Triple Jump podcast. My name is Ben. My name is James. And my name is Ashton. Hi guys. Hello. Hello. How you doing? I'm sure about the order when I'm on. Thank Hi, you. I'm good. Spooky for a second there, yeah. wasn't it? Mm. Welcome everyone to this very special podcast. This podcast is sponsored by Square Enix, who have hired us to talk to you about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. There's a link in the description right now if you want to check the game out. And you flipping should. I personally am very excited for it. Ashton, I'm you also played very the first excited. one. You're excited. And James... I am very, very intrigued by it because mm. I've not played the remake, but I've played the original uh, to uh, uh, some degree. Mm. So uh, <laughs> We're all yeah. representing different levels of experience of with, yeah. with mm -hmm. Final Fantasy mm. VII, and uh, obviously the remake is, is something that I'm extremely passionate about, so it's, it's a privilege to be able to sit here and talk about it. It's coming out on the mm. 29th of February on PlayStation 5. Again, go click that link in the description. And over the next hour or so, we're going to be talking to you about our personal experience with Final Fantasy 7, the stuff we're excited for about Rebirth, and why you should hop into Rebirth, even if you've never played any part of the Final Fantasy experience before. Mm -hmm. So, without much further ado, should we hop into our first section, guys? I think we should. But yeah. before we do that, mm -hmm. we go into the main bulk of what we're going to talk about today. We're yeah. going to talk about just Final Fantasy VII as a whole, and mm -hmm. specifically what it's about. Yes. Um, so, James, do you want to give us a little bit of a, a rundown of Final Fantasy VII? Well, from my memory, and definitely not from notes. <laughs> uh, not from the notes launched that are in 1997. <laughs> No, so obviously, uh, first launched on the original PlayStation, uh, 1997. It's a classic. It's an absolute classic. Final Fantasy VII is a JRPG developed originally by Square before they uh, merged to Square Enix. Mm -hmm. um, it was a whopper. It was three discs worth of, of game. Yes. And it kind of... Uh, Changed the whole game with, um, you know, it was, it was one of the first to show off really flashy cinematics and stuff. And FMV is incredible. But um, yeah, as a as a um, as a basic sort of plot uh, point, so players assume the role of Cloud Strife, a mercenary who signs up to help an eco terrorist organization known as Avalanche. Uh, so together, they look to take down the evil Shinra Electric Power Company. They're a powerful corporation, not only responsible for draining the planet of its life essence to use as an energy source, because they're nasty people. Mm -hmm. uh, they also do a lot of other horrible stuff too, so that's fun. Um, on their journey, they encounter the fearsome elite soldier Sephiroth, who while also uh, against Shinra, he also has his own twisted aims. He has his uh, his own little plan for and fate fantastic hair. the planet. Incredible hair. Sweet hair, Look sweet it. sword. It's on the TV behind us. Yeah, I'd, you know, he seems cool. I don't know. What I'd the, be what his friend. Yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. I'd be, I think he'd like to be my friend, I think too. he would Probably, definitely yeah. like Best to friends be with friend. Sephiroth. Yeah. Uh-huh. So um, that, that's a very simple sort of... Yeah. Yeah, th there's Basic a lot premise. of... Uh, yeah, subplots and twists and turns with the stories mm -hmm. is incredible. It's um, one of the most incredible stories mm -hmm. in video games. Yeah. It's, uh, we'll talk more in a second, obviously, about mm -hmm. what the game as a whole means to us and mm -hmm. how we got into it and stuff. But That's right. yeah, it's 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 unbelievable. I'm so excited for this uh, for the second part as well. James, can you tell us a bit about sort of the reception to the original Final Fantasy? Well, understandably. It was very high reception. Mm. Uh, the game was showered with praise, obviously. It won a ton of awards. It earned like 92% on Metacritic and game rankings. Um, and it's cited as one of the greatest video games of all time. So, uh, yeah. Uh, it was referred to by game fan as quite possibly the greatest game ever made. GameSpot commented that never before have technology, playability, and narrative combined quite as well as in Final Fantasy VII. Uh, they express particular favour towards the game's graphics, audio, and story. The four reviewers of Electronic Gaming Monthly unanimously gave it a 9.5 out of 10, uh, lauding its rendered backgrounds, use of FMV, battles, and especially the storyline. So I think it's safe to say, uh, yeah, it was received pretty well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I would. I'd, I think it's safe to say that. Mm. There's. I mean, everybody knows of Final Fantasy VII, even yeah. if you haven't actually played it. But it, I think it's it's worthwhile going over the fundamentals again because it's. Uh, mm. You know, there are so many amazing games in the video games industry that sometimes you can sort of forget that. Oh yeah, this did actually originally come out at some mm. point, mm. and people bloody loved it. Yeah. Also, Final Fantasy is such an iconic 
series and franchise mm. that sometimes it can be a little bit confusing because obviously they're all individual games you don't yeah. have to play everything else yeah. and when you hear like the seventh game in a series you think oh man oh, I don't I need to play first six, I haven't yeah. got six <laughs> games to play but you don't yeah. which is brilliant yeah. and Final Fantasy 7 is potentially the best one and it's the one that everyone always talks about everyone mm. loves it so I, it's why I wanted to play it, yeah. um, but I didn't at the time because I wasn't born. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's Damn. true, yeah. I mean, I didn't knowledge. play it at launch either because I was also quite young, but I mm. played it shortly after. I suppose now would be a good time to hop in and talk about our personal experience experiences with yeah. Final Fantasy mm-hmm. VII, both the original and the remake part one of the trilogy that's, uh, that's going to be coming out. Uh, so should I hop in first? Yes. Go for it. What happened to this place? It was Sephiroth. So my first experience with Final Fantasy VII was courtesy of my mother, hey. who went into Electronics Boutique and found it in a discount bin. So it would have been a few years after ah, it actually okay. came mm-hmm. out. Yeah. And I think her decision was based entirely on the fact that it's three discs. What incredible value. <laughs> so much game. For only uh, an amount of And pounds. how long can I keep Ben quiet <laughs> yeah. for? Yeah, <laughs> turns out not very long because nah. we got that. I then went for a sleepover at my friend's house and I took that and we started mm-hmm. playing it. And I've told this anecdote before, but the mm-hmm. first opening FMV cutscene uh, where, you know, it's the it's the city of Midgar and there's the train going round yep. and it starts with Aerith in an alleyway sort of tending to her flowers and there's some sort of Mako energy flying around and it plays this sort mm. of eerie sting. It's very mm-hmm. creepy. Yeah. And then it sort of rises and Weirdly. swells into the main theme of Final Fantasy mm-hmm. VII. But that moment in isolation gave me nightmares. <laughs> Because I was Fantastic. such a such a wet blanket that uh, <laughs> everything and anything scared me, and and this game was so different from everything. You know, I was just playing Crash Team Racing before that, mm. you know, or Worms. Mm, that could be scary. I'd never seen anything this cinematic before. Yeah. The fact that it was sort of mysterious and new, and it didn't excite me so much as it it terrified me. And yeah. I think that evening we managed to play through to the first sort of Scorpion mech boss fight when you're taking down the first yeah. reactor, and then. Come the morning, I was like, I don't want it. I'm going to leave it with you because that was too much for me. You can borrow it if you'd like. <laughs> That's three whole discs, Ben. You get away three discs. discs worth. I was like, Good I Lord. bought three discs. What a waste. Uh, eventually, uh, I got the game back from him and it, I just fell in love with it. Yeah. It's uh, I do cite it as the game that got me into games mm. and uh, it is one of my favorite games of all time. I'm nice. mentally scarred by several moments in that game because mm. it's it's quite dark and graphic yeah. even for the time. Um, there's a there's a bit that I don't know if they'll replicate in this game, but Sephiroth has has stormed through and something is impaled on something and they did not leave anything to the imagination. They just like they drew that and you saw it. Wow. And it was it was a lot and uh, that stuck with me. There's oh, it's so difficult because I mean, the whole point of this podcast, obviously, is to encourage people to play Rebirth, who've mm-hmm. yeah. even, you know, not not played the other games before. So I'm hesitant mm-hmm. because while this game is sort of 25 years old and spoilers were yeah. just talked about for years and years and years, now with the remakes bringing fresh life to the series, it's difficult to know what you can and can't talk about. Well, a I'm, point. Yeah. I'm a bit of an example of this mm-hmm. um, <laughs> because I had a sneaking suspicion that something was going to happen in the game that I'd heard vague mentions of, but didn't know it did actually happen until we were recording a list and it got spoiled for me. Uh, and I was, and uh, Kieran was like, oh, you know when this happens? And I was like, what are you talking about, sorry, huh? <laughs> and then he was like, oh man. Mm, and then he did feel bad, me. but it's fine. It's my fault. <laughs> well, actually, I wouldn't say it's my fault. I think it's my achievement to have managed to yeah, miss to manage this. To avoid it. It's quite That's a key impressive. moment as yeah. well. I managed to get the whole way through my life without mm. having it spoiled. Um, but what's it? it's 25 well over 25 years yeah. old so you know it's it's such a weird point of like you mm. know that yeah you, you're spoiling 25 year old game but no you're also spoiling a game that hasn't even come out yet with yeah, the remakes very mm-hmm. strange yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's a tricky one but <laughs> god damn Either way, Final Fantasy VII, the original, is one mm. of my favorite games ever. Uh, I've played it numerous times over the mm. years. I was thrilled when they released the the sort of remaster that came out about 10 years ago uh, that had trophy support and stuff. So I was mm. able to go back through then. And 
essentially do all the stuff that I never did on the original yeah. P, you know, physical yeah. PS1 release, which was which was very cool. Uh, I remember because you've got materia in the game, which is your magic. I remember going into primary school really excited to tell my friend that I'd leveled up fire to fire two. Oh. And that was like, I was so chuffed. I think it was <laughs> maybe around that point where I was, I sort of started to understand more complex video game mechanics, mm. you know, yeah. how, you know, different systems could work rather than, as I said, with Crash Team Racing, just holding <laughs> go forwards, you know, mm. and pressing the shoot button. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, it just fundamentally changed how I viewed video games and every, I think, to, to, a, to a certain extent, every JRPG I've ever played since has, I've, I've sort of held it up to Final Fantasy VII as a point of comparison. Yeah. That is the benchmark for me personally. Mm -hmm. Who would like to talk about their experience with the first uh, Final Fantasy VII? Okay, so if, if we're talking about the first one, I should yes. probably go then. Um, mm. So I did not play it on release. I, I didn't have uh, a PlayStation as a little wee lad, unfortunately. But mm -hmm. I have... Uh, I have played the, uh, so it would be the remaster there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, essentially very similar, but, you know, a few sort of uh, modern quality of life sort of tweaks and stuff. You can speed it up. It's kind of like um, that sort of thing. So I played that only a few years ago, actually. Mm -hmm. um, after hearing so much about it, and I knew, you know, Final Fantasy VII, oh, it's the best game in the series, et cetera, et cetera. Loads of people talking about it. Fine, I'll, I'll get around to playing it. And I knew it was quite a, an, an undertaking. And I, uh, I I will confess that I still have not finished it, but I played a good, I don't know, like 40 hours worth. You've quite played a, quite a chunk. It sounds um, like you've played up to probably a decent way into where Rebirth is going to be yeah, taking the story. It, it feels like roughly around the halfway point. Um, you know, so, so I got um, out of Midgard and... Uh, you know, up, up to like, uh, a few sort of towns worth. Mm. Um, I'll say that much without spoiling too much. But yeah, my my initial thoughts were um, obviously it's 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 different going back to a game that you may have missed as a classic, mm. uh, and going back to that classic game and and sort of trying to put your your mindset back into ah oh, that's that's how video games work. But I'll say it's very impressive with the uh, the pre rendered like backgrounds and everything mm -hmm. still look gorgeous to this day it's you know and the benefit of that sort of art style anyway um yeah you, you like, got, the, like lock the, boys? Yeah, uh, the lock boys with yeah with their big block, oh, the block <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i love the fact that um cloud kind of looks uh, a bit like popeye with the with the arms and everything mm -hmm. yeah. um so yeah muscly. it's fantastic yeah exactly just uh just a muscly lad um yeah i i do like that because that, that's got a bit of charm to it too you know? mm -hmm. um, yeah i love that it's it's one of those things where people you're like this is my favorite game mm. play it and it's from 1997 yeah. mm -hmm. and then they they try and they just get can't get past the visuals well, like, but mm. there's a great story there i promise oh, this is, story is fantastic exactly yeah. what mm. happened with me is no, that everyone no. always talks about how good final fantasy 7 is yeah and i just mm. looked at it and i looked at the way it played and i thought i am not gonna get on with this mm -hmm. i do mm. not have the nostalgia for this era of games and graphics. I can appreciate yeah. it from a distance. My boyfriend was playing it a few years ago now. He was playing through the entire game. And um, I was watching him play like on and off. And I was like, I can appreciate this, but I know that I would not <laughs> be able to get on with this. Though I do think having kind of shifted a lot of my interest in the last few months in terms of gaming, I could see myself playing it now yeah. mm -hmm. more so than I could have about... Four, four or five years ago now. Maybe yeah. with like um, playing more indie games and stuff. That well, like, they tend more, to do a, a lot of those Yeah, a lot more turn-based stuff. Yeah, that stuff. kind yeah, of same yeah. thing. So I was like, I think I if I was if it was now mm. and the remake wasn't imminent or the a rebirth, sorry, wasn't imminent, yeah. mm. I would maybe potentially be convinced to go back and play it. But it is That's also cool. a mammoth yeah. game. It yeah. is huge. Yeah. Yeah. And it's quite the commitment. Mm -hmm. Um so I just decided to stick with the remake and the the new ones that are coming out because I mm -hmm. thought that's going to be a bit more up my alley. Mm -hmm. um, when was it that you decided to hop into the remake then? Because you didn't play it at launch, did you? No, mm -hmm. I didn't. I don't know why I didn't play it. I don't know if I was playing something else at the time. I'm not sure. But I played it about three months after I moved to Newcastle mm -hmm. um, when I started Triple Jump. I think mm -hmm. I just, I'd had it in the backlog for a while. It's like we all just got to, oh no, we're starting a Triple Jump. Better play Final Fantasy Better 7. Better play Final Fantasy 7. Better Final Fantasy 7. Better Better Ben, does, ben yeah. always says, if you haven't played it, he's not going to talk to you. Exactly. Um, you don't get paid. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I picked it up. I think it was 
just after mm. or just before the DLC came out, it might have been a little while afterwards because I had the disc. Mm. Um, and I just sat down and I was like, I'm going to play this now. This is what I'm going to give a go. And I played the whole thing and I had a brilliant time. The, the My origin story is nowhere near as interesting as Ben's. I didn't get scared <laughs> of it. I didn't leave it with a friend <laughs> for like six months. Um, yeah. But I really, really loved Final Fantasy VII Remake. I, mm. I didn't know if I was going to. Um, I had not played a JRPG before. It's not really a genre that I gravitate towards. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'll give it a go. Everyone says it's amazing. It looks great. Like mm. the characters seem fun. And I was um, fixated on it. From the moment I started playing it until the moment I finished it, I was like, this is what I want to play. I don't want to play anything else right now. I don't want to go to work. I just want to play my game. Um, and I had a great time with it. I wasn't necessarily the best at the combat, even even though it wasn't turn-based. Um, I got I, I don't like menus when I'm trying to fight. I'm very much a button masher. And I <laughs> yeah, kept yeah. forgetting to use oh, no. like my magic or my other characters mm, mm -hmm. until very much like later in the game. And I was like, Oh, it all makes oh, sense now. Oh, much easier. This makes. I get yeah. it now. I get it. <laughs> it's just cloud, like absolutely jacked to the yeah. and Everyone else yeah. is all wimpy, like please, yeah. yeah. Let us throw a fireball. I just, <laughs> yeah. He's just like smacking and smacking and smacking, and everyone else is like, "Me now, bro, me? calm down." Until it clicked, and I was like, "Now I see why everyone enjoys <laughs> this so much." Yeah. Um, but I, I had a great time, and I especially loved um the intermission dlc mm -hmm. which stars yuffie yes because she's great i love her and i am obsessed the way that she enters every fight like i'm the best and you're gonna die <laughs> and i'm like i love that energy maybe i just very that much sort of a, a cocky a cockiness that's yeah. in the original game yeah. as well she just mm. walks in like you are rubbish i am the best she's a mega ninja here it mm. is um and yeah i think she's great and mm. i am excited to see more of her in rebirth yeah. probably so well done. Well, hopefully you'll find her. James, <laughs> yes. why was it that you didn't hop into the remake then? Because you've obviously, wow. you said you played a bit of the remaster, but mm. the remake has eluded you so yeah, far. Yeah, it's interesting, actually. So, uh, I say, well, uh, depending on your point of view. <laughs> it's fast, it's <laughs> I'll blow my, <laughs> blow my own horn. It's no, a really um, interesting story, actually. <laughs> it all goes back to 2000. <laughs> mm. um, no, so... Uh, yeah, so when I started like pl playing the original Final Fantasy VII, or you know, the, the closest approximation mm -hmm. to um, with the remaster, I it was basically just because I knew that the um, it might have been just after the remake had come out actually. So that was partly why I sort of jumped into it. Mm -hmm. um, all right, well, I want to see what the differences are. I'm going to commit to this. I'm going to play the original one. Um, maybe sort of not giving it as much respect in terms of like the length of time it would take and the commitment and uh so i ended up playing a lot of the original game mm -hmm. and uh i got to um you know quite a substantial way through and then just got distracted by something or other and then never got around to playing the remake because i thought you know in my head i'd rationalize well i still haven't finished my little project with the original game mm -hmm. and then i want to be able to compare it and appreciate all the changes and mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff so, yeah, that's um, unfortunately something that uh, is still on my to playlist. Yeah. And it is even more so having seen, you know, all the uh, all the, the hype and the trailers and stuff for Rebirth and, you know, just uh, re-familiarizing myself with the story as well. But, mm. yeah, my God, um, the... It, it did really blow me away, like, just for quality of the story as well because that was very much a... Uh, Final Fantasy, so, uh, like... It almost sort of broke the mold of mm -hmm. uh, we're we're not doing the whole uh, yeah it's it's not fantasy setting anymore necessarily. I think six was maybe a steampunk one. I, I think I it played was, that one. It was right? it led more into that. Yeah, yeah this this was very much a, like, a mm. departure. Um, but this was so yeah so different and like you said before, like it's it's very uh, very adult themes, and I I was quite surprised at that. Really, I knew mm -hmm. it would be a different setting, but that really sort of. Uh, blew me away but yeah as, as far as um the remake uh yeah just just eluded me up till now i will finish the original i've committed to this now <laughs> you must know so then games. i'll do the remake and i'll do rebirth and mm. then um yeah we've we've got the dlc and we've got uh Whatever oh, else oh, yeah. crisis, core. <laughs> crisis core that's yeah. the one thank you um yeah 
there's there's a lot a lot of Final Fantasy lot there, to, yeah. to to enjoy, which is why mm. the message is you can hop straight into Rebirth and uh, you know there's fantastic other Final Fantasy like Seven me. stuff out there. Yeah, you don't have to <laughs> you be don't have to do your homework. You don't have to be like, like, like James and feel like you have to play through everything. You really can just hop yeah, straight into this new right. one. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand. I was very excited for remake, mm -hmm. the part one of this these trilogy of, of remakes of Final Fantasy VII. It felt like a dream come true when it was uh, first announced. Yeah. I couldn't quite believe it was actually happening because <laughs> it was. I remember there was uh, on the Everyone's... when the PlayStation Three first came out, mm -hmm. they did like a little tech demo that was the they they remade the opening oh. and and everyone was like oh my god are they doing this and then they it was just like to show the power of the ps3 mm. it was, and it was, was like oh a, man a shame you have a bit of a bait god, and switch, yeah. yeah i would have god it, i mean but i'm glad we we did end up having to wait because the version obviously that we did get was i mean it, it it was everything that i wanted i couldn't I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it was finally happening it was a, yeah. it was a long wait between the announcement and it mm. eventually coming out mm. Um, but I remember going to uh, EGX in, uh, it would have been 2019, and booking a slot to play the demo, which was against that Scorpion boss that did give me nightmares back in the day. Mm -hmm. I was like, ah, take that, Scorpion yeah. boss. <laughs> I'm a grown man now. You can't scare me anymore. And it's even more high fidelity now. Yeah. I know, it's even, even scarier. scarier. It's even wow. scarier. I'm just that brave. Be brave, mm -hmm. Ben. Uh, but the thing that, that really blew my mind was mm. the music and how that had been completely rearranged mm. and redone. Because I'd been listening to like the final fantasy 7 soundtrack is one of the great oh, there's so many things about this yeah. game that makes it one of the greatest of all time and the mm -hmm. soundtrack is one of them for sure yeah, yeah. The, the battle yeah. music is like was stuck in my head before I even played the original. There's like because six it's just pieces iconic. of battle yeah. music that are yeah. iconic. Yeah. You know, well, yeah, that's it. It's Sephiroth's one. theme, One Winged Angel. Mm. You know, mm. that's that's it's so it's such an iconic piece of music, and mm. to hear it all that music redone and like modernized and tweaked slightly, that was just it was so cool. The music for that uh, for that boss fight, I, I ended up finding someone had made like a custom. YouTube clip like extended version scorpion boss fight or whatever <laughs> one hour and I was it wasn't one hour <laughs> oh, but it was like it was clipped hey, from that. some gameplay video that was yeah. available before mm. launch and I, it was Amazing. like two minutes long and I, sa I saved it to my phone <laughs> oh and my occasionally God. I just listened to it like this <laughs> is whoa, it's making the hair stand up on the back of my neck yeah. this is this is mm -hmm. fantastic um, and you know just the way that they extended the Midgar section because obviously the, mm. the the Midgar section of the original game and the escape was was not was was a very small part of the game on the mm. whole. Yeah. Um, and they managed to extend it to a full release without really making it feel padded or bloated. Like they, mm. they shone a light on more uh, background characters who only had a bit part in the original and got yeah. to flesh them out. And you got to go on way more adventures than you ever did before. And seeing the, the you know, the, the, the Sector 7 slums realized in, in yeah. 4K was just... Oh, it was so cool! Yeah, like if I you could have shown that to to young me, I would have I would have lost my yeah. life <laughs> and, and probably wet the bed because I was so scared. <laughs> oh uh, but yeah, it was, it, and it also took the absurd bits as well. Mm. You know, mm. the the honeybee in. Oh, I God, love that. Yeah, and all that stuff, and everyone was like, "How are they gonna? How are they gonna do? That? Are they just gonna? They can't cut it out and pretend I'm, it doesn't exist." I'm impressed. They yeah, they but did they, it they in just that way leaned into in it and like yeah. they just yeah. made it work. It was it, mm. all the absurd side stuff like made. <laughs> sense in like a in a truly special final fantasy 7 way and rebirth i know james you're partially familiar and ashton mm. you're not familiar at all no. there are numerous very absurd bits oh my god yeah in in this portion of the game <laughs> and like uh, along with all the amazing moments that we're going to get to in a minute in our next section that i just cannot wait to see yeah. realized uh in 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 rebirth and uh, yeah it's just uh it's honestly i know we're being paid to do this but it's, it's a privilege to be able to talk about Final Fantasy <laughs> VII like this. I'm yeah, so oh, yeah. excited. I'm so excited. Uh, wow. But yeah, that's my story. That's my story with the remake. Obviously, you can see some of my selection of Final Fantasy yeah. VII boxes on the table if you're watching the video mm. version, including my lovely shiny edition yeah. of yes. Remake, which is uh, the name of part one. So shall we move along to what we're... James showing off. Look at that shiny, wow. reflective cover. Oh, that's so <laughs> nice. <laughs> Shall we move on to talk about what we're most excited about in uh, Rebirth? Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. Ready to fire, sir. Welcome to the New World Order. Fire! 
So with Rebirth releasing on the 29th of February, we thought we should clue you guys in on what we're most excited to see in part two of this remake trilogy. Uh, we won't be touching on specific spoiler points here, but we will be talking generally about some of the uh, the plot points that we're aware are coming that's either been spoken about in interviews or shown in trailers or press releases or screenshots, that kind of stuff. Uh, so we'll keep it nice and vague, but also there is some stuff that we're very excited for. Uh, Ashton, yes. would you like to kick us off? I would love to. Um, the first thing I'm really excited for, as someone who has not played the originals, is to see the world outside of Midgar. Um, mm. At the end of the last game, we started to explore outside mm. um and i'm really excited to see what's out there um it's massive yeah well obviously <laughs> there's a talk of wutai that get mentioned a lot in the first game which is like another area mm -hmm. and we've seen a couple of other areas that i'm just really excited to go to um so i'm i'm excited to explore for the first time and i'm sure you guys are excited to explore it in brand new Mm, vibes wow yeah yes. full uh hd sort of 3d modeled uh yeah. environments for me yeah. <laughs> be, i mean in the crazy. original it That'd just so zoomed the camera all the way yeah. out and there was like tiny blocky cloud that running around on on like world a world map yeah like a sphere <laughs> like you saw the globe rotate oh, beneath was, you mm -hmm. uh which yeah was fantastic and you would just walk up to these little settlements and then load, yeah. into, load into a proper full area i'm very interested to see how how it's adapted because once you leave Midgar, that's the point in the original game that the game truly opens up. So I'm yeah. just I'm just excited. I just want to see where we go. And what well, I mean, crazy. I know where we go, but well, I don't know what's yeah. gonna happen. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> things might be different. We we'll might go somewhere else, exactly. Yeah. James. Yes. What are you excited for? I'm excited to see, I mean, like I said before, everything in new shiny HD mode, how they're gonna uh, all of the different areas. Like there are a lot of like iconic areas just when you get to that sort of open world uh, section mm. uh just in the original game it's it's pretty crazy like obviously um there's, there's a few specifics so uh <laughs> the golden saucer is insane yeah mm -hmm. um so are you are you aware ashton of, of the golden saucer stuff Vaguely. is that in the remake already? I no. don't know. No, I can't. no I have I've not seen, okay. We've seen clips and bits of it yeah. in trailers and stuff, and <laughs> mm -hmm. I have been informed what I am in for, and yeah. I am oh, excited. God. It's like an amusement park. <laughs> It is. Pretty it's much, very yeah. much like an amusement yeah. park. I loved the Golden Saucer. Um, I used to go there like... You know when you're sort of role playing in a game, mm. especially when you're younger. I find it harder to do now as an adult. But like, <laughs> like when I used to play Spyro, I used mm. to after a tough mission, I used to take him to like a, a, a nice little waterfall in one of the hub worlds <laughs> yeah. and just have him splash about because he yeah. earned it. Yeah. He yeah, deserves it. Yeah. He's a good exactly. boy. Yeah. The Golden Saucer for me is it, it's where I went to let my party members relax. Yeah, mm -hmm. in that game. in between big moments, you just exactly. Oh, let's chill out. Let's I remember down. one of my crowning achievements nice. in that game when I first played it was saving up for a lifetime ticket because you have to pay oh. to get it. Right, and I, a lifetime ticket absurdly expensive. Yeah, it from is. What I remember. It's and like I bought, comically I expensive. bought a lifetime pass Dude. so that I could go in and out the of the Golden Saucer whenever I wanted. Good stuff. And uh, and I I can I think it might actually it's, it's either the Golden Saucer or the Gold Saucer. I might be getting it confused in my head. It's one of the two. I'll double check. Yeah. Uh, but certainly, yeah, I'm really excited to see that. And off the back of it, I understand there's going to be a flip ton of mini games as well yeah. because there were in the yeah, original game lots were. of arcade games and, and things like that. Let me mm. just check this. <laughs> That's something else I'm, I'm excited for. Mm. Uh, is that, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's a cool dog in the first game oh well in the remake God, and it's, yeah. it's, he's also in the uh, original game as well it's the yeah. gold source my the mistake saucer. apologies oh, that's okay you're forgiven oh, I got and it wrong too. <laughs> I love a cool dog in a game a cool cat also mm. but the cool mm. dog is specifically he's called Red 13 yes. and I only just met him for my very first time at mm. the end of remake and mm. I'm excited to get to play as him He's going to be in the party, mm. and he's going to be in one of my menus, and I can't wait to figure that out. <laughs> it's so going to be great. Yeah, I didn't realize that he wasn't in the party mem uh, as a party member mm. in the first one, but it does kind of make sense because that uh, you meet him like right towards the end, right? Mm. You do. So yeah. yeah, that's going to be wild. You're just playing as a uh, you know a wolf, a crazy red wolf kind of lion, cool fire dog wolf thing. dog man, yeah, fire yeah. dog, yeah. He's, he's one of my favorites. He was one of my party members when I played the original game. Mm, I had him the cool. whole time. Uh, but yeah, as you said, James, you 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 find him right at the climax yeah. of the sort of Midgar section of the game, which obviously is at the end of Remake Part 1. Uh, and 
He does fight alongside you, but he's not a controllable party member. Ah. And so in this yeah, one, he's a he's a fully fledged party member that, that you can sense. you can control and mm. and fight in battle. And uh, I remember yeah. his moves. He he just did, used to do like flips and then bite and and <laughs> he like howls at the moon and stuff. Oh, it's cool. It's yeah. gonna be good. The only issue I ever have with adding a party member to my gang is that then it gives me an extra decision to make of who I have to bring with me because I'm gonna bring everyone. I don't want anyone mm. to be left behind. Yeah, it's sad, isn't it? And then I'm like, oh, but but if I don't bring. Tifa, she's gonna think I don't care about. Yeah, her. she's gonna be sad. <laughs> and she's gonna be so sad. But also, cool dog. So <laughs> you know, these are the things you have to you have to figure out. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Segways. Segways. Oh, I've got God. segways written down that here. Great. <laughs> that was a great segue, Ben. No, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, this is a tiny part of one of the trailers yeah. that we got for this game, where I think there are. I think it's called Costa del Sol. This could be a golden saucer moment again for me, where I get it mm. wrong. I think you're right. But it's a seaside the, the resort, resort was, town. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was fun. Oh, and amazing. it shows cloud. I mean, I'd like to think I may just be this may be a sort of Mandela effect thing. I seem to remember him wearing like a little helmet, but he might not have done. <laughs> he had I a like to think that, shirt uh, on, I think. He was wearing sort okay. of summertime clothes. Yeah. Maybe he wasn't wearing a helmet, but I like to think mm. that Cloud would be safe on the same. I don't think his hair would fit under a helmet. No, it wouldn't. It's well, too, it too would be spiky, molded, too crusty. It's too voluminous. It would just be just, just a special right hole yeah. cut. Yeah. 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 Uh, so there's just a bit of him poodling along <laughs> <laughs> the coastline on his Segway. And just that small moment, I was like, I can't wait to see this. I don't is, know what form that's going to take. But I'm absolutely baffled because having only played Remake, mm. I'm like, why is he so chill? Like everything mm -hmm. in everything that happens in Remake yeah. is so like intense. <laughs> you know, we're eco-terrorists. We're trying to take down the bad guys. Yep. All this stuff's happening. And then just like the <laughs> juxtaposition the in my mind of just <laughs> cloud on a segue. Mm. I am so excited to figure out, how, to find out how we get there. That's my like, one it, of the things I'm most excited about. You know, I had the same thought yeah. playing the original game. I'm I was like, like, hang on, why are we just chilling on the beach now? I mean, I love it, but like, yeah. Yeah. Is I'm excited. I, I'm all for the, the crazy, silly stuff. Yeah, It's yeah. one of those abs absurdist sort of moments that yeah. are, you know, the whole gold saucer section, you know, there's story stuff that happens there, but also they are just playing, yeah. <laughs> playing yeah. on arcade games uh, but classic clouds yeah. cloud story development you know it, it is a mm. thing that happens as the game goes on mm. and he starts cold and indifferent and as time goes along you know he becomes friends with these people yeah. and he starts to care about them doesn't mean necessarily that guy. he loves segways <laughs> uh but because that wasn't in the original game but i'm excited mm. to ride segways and also hopefully see um red 13 on a segue oh there is <laughs> there is an absurd Sorry, bit okay. in the original game and i don't know if they'll even bother to adapt it i think you might know what i'm talking about but also i don't want to yeah. say it in case it happens <laughs> but they basically they they all have to disguise themselves at one point oh my God, so and exciting. red 13 also attempts to do that Brilliant. i won't give you the in, in, ins and outs and okay. like the, yeah. the context yeah. of it yeah. but in the original even in the original <laughs> game it was just hysterical. If Red 13 is riding a Segway, I hope it's one of those ones with one wheel. So he's got like two paws on one wheel, two paws on one <laughs> yeah, wheel on the back. So like it's a like a motorbike. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. We, <laughs> we've put wheels on Red 13. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, Segways is, that's that's one of those silly things mm. that I'm just I'm just very excited for. But there's going to be something else you'll be able to do at the Gold Saucer as well, isn't there, James? There is. Chocobo racing. Chocobo. <laughs> I've, I've purposely mispronounced that. I'm sorry. It's Chocobo <laughs> racing. Yeah. Chocoboos. Chocoboos are sort of people who are yeah. big fans of, of Chocobos. Mm. Mm. Oh I was rubbish at Chocobo racing in the original game. You yeah, would be able to like bit, feed like, them like, greens and like submit yeah, your whole, own Chocobos. It felt like a whole like extra mini game, uh, like meta game <laughs> around mm. that. It's like, oh, feed them the right things. And then, and then you could gamble on fast. them as well. Oh, I don't yeah, know if the gambling yeah. will make it across to the new Maybe. one. But yeah. Uh, yeah, you could bet on the Chocobo mm. races and uh, it's a part of the story, actually, the Chocobo racing. But mm. hopefully it'll be nice and fledged out because once you do get released into the world, uh, in the original, you're not too far from Chocobo Bill and his mm. farm mm -hmm. where he breeds Chocobos yeah. and stores Chocobos for you and he gives you a special power, like a special That's materia that you could, it's like Chocobo Lure, I think it is. Uh, yeah. And then you could catch Chocobos and have a Chocobo on command Love that. Uh, I don't know if that will make it across into this that would be pretty cool if it does because then it sort of becomes a bit like monster catchery which mm -hmm. which could be quite interesting but yeah. who knows it's it was a it was a mechanic that I did not make use of in my first playthrough because I got rid of the Chocobo lure like I sold it and oh, I didn't no. even realize until ages afterwards <laughs> Ooh, like oh rough. man that's that gonna rough. make that's yeah. gonna make traversal a little challenging <laughs> so uh 
Yeah, yeah. Chocobo Racing will be, yeah, will that, be an interesting one to see. Mm. Mm. Also, apparently mini games as yeah. well. Yeah, just the amusements. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to mm. see what mini games we get. There was like a Man. submarine game, uh, which turned out was sort of like training you for something else. Uh, there was a, I think like a basketball game. There was like a, I think it was a, like an arm wrestling game where you sort of had to mash the button as fast as you could oh, to beat yeah, the yeah, arm. And then you got that. tickets and yeah. you could exchange them for things. There was uh, there was all sorts of stuff in the gold saucer. Um, mm. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how that comes to fruition. I hope there's more opportunities to show off to burly men. Because uh, <laughs> in the remake, uh, I was really good at doing pull-ups. Was it pull-ups? Oh, yeah. Oh, God, the you stuff go in the, the gym, gym was so <laughs> yeah. hard. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't do many more other than, like, I think the bare minimum I had to do. But mm. when I nailed it, I was like, yeah, look yeah. at that, men. <laughs> look how at me. Rippling muscle. That was one of the hair. hardest yeah. parts of getting the platinum trophy in that game. Was, really? Was the gym section. Ah. <laughs> because the higher, le like, the hardest level gym bit, it yeah. was it was facing basically the Terminator. Like they were, they were pressing, because you had to press the buttons in sequence mm. as they went round. Uh, but it would change patterns sometimes, I think, and the, the AI would just Sorry. smash it, like, first time every time. Oh, and, it, yeah, you had to do it for an absurd amount of time, and you'd, like, mess up right at the end, you get really cross. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was hard. Oh. It was hard. So some of these mini games are probably going to be there's, bonkers difficult. Yeah, yeah. there's going to be some, some trophies involved with the mini games, yeah. and you're going to be cursing them. I'm probably sure, will. But, uh, probably will. I'll see. Yeah. I'll see if I can do it this time. It's gonna be around. interesting. Uh, yeah. There was there was one mini game Ben. Um, well, I don't know. I shouldn't spoil it too much. But like, uh, I remember you talking about this being a quite a pivotal thing. Mm. But I don't think it was at the Gold Saucer. It was like, uh, I'll just say skiing. There we go. <laughs> oh, okay. Was it? Yeah, there was. There's, I, I there's definitely. Yeah, they they take. So nice. They, oh man, without it's difficult to talk about without going yeah. into details. Oh, um, well, we don't have to. I just, it just there, there came are to me. there are mini games in the Gold Saucer that, like, mm. at least in the original, turned like just showed up as a real thing later in the game. Like they were yeah. almost including more mini it's games training. by just yeah, either training or like recycling <laughs> bits of the later good, game. Yeah. yeah, it is clever. So I don't know if to sort of keep those sections a bit more exciting and interesting and new later on in the in the in the trilogy whether or not mm. those will be included i mean they could come up with loads of new ones couldn't they mm. quite easily two words mm. segway skiing segway skiing god there we go dangerous asking <laughs> definitely for a wear a helmet for gonna, that. gonna die doing that <laughs> yeah. one uh they they could easily like they could put the whole of final fantasy one on a machine in that game <laughs> oh my god you could just play that final fantasy brilliant. one in, yeah. Like, yeah. in the arcade for, for 15 hours nice. or something if you wanted to clap we've got to save the world <laughs> yeah. no I'm finishing Final Fantasy 1 at this yeah. arcade oh, unit. Well, there's something else yeah. that is apparently a really, really big moment. And we've mm. seen a lot of it in the trailer. There's a lot of like Sephiroth surrounded by fire, mm -hmm. which I've been informed mm. by this Ben yeah. and my boyfriend Ben, who gave me the rundown of like, this is all you need to know about this place because mm. it's going to be good, mm. um, is Nibelheim. Mm. And there's a Nibelheim incident and I can't wait to find out what that is. <laughs> yeah. Not going to tell you what it is, but it, it, it is like an iconic moment. Basically, all the screenshots you've ever seen of mm. Sephiroth where he's like smirking and surrounded by fire. Mm -hmm. That's that mm. moment. And mm. it, like, that's a big Sephiroth it's moment. Huge. Uh, yeah, that's... I, I'm just going to pretty bad. It's a big moment Whoa. for Cloud as well, though, mm -hmm. isn't it? And mm -hmm. uh, dives a lot into his character at the same yeah. time. And as, his backstory. His stuff. stuff starts to get revealed and you learn more about various characters and what's yeah. what's happening in the world. And mm. God, I just want to talk about it in plain terms, <laughs> but I can't. But it's yeah, it's a really it's cool exciting. it's a really cool moment. That happens in Rebirth, um, which you can experience on the 29th of February. Uh, okay. But there's other story stuff as well that happens while we're there. Uh, you've got, obviously, Aerith's whole arc, which yeah. we won't talk about in detail, <laughs> but stuff might happen to the characters in well, this, this game. Well, this is also the thing, is that we don't know, because no. things are different. Things yes. have changed, changed right? from the first game the remake mm. to the original. Mm -hmm. So we don't actually know This when... guy behind you, Zach, who's who's cloud with black hair. Yeah. yeah. What how does he play into things? Because it's it's not a spoiler to say that in the in the original game, mm. he was he was dead by the time of Final yeah. Fantasy VII's plot. Mm -hmm. That's it. But he's shown at the end of of remake part 1 of the trilogy oh. 
still alive, yeah. which is which is not not correct wow. at all. And on top of that, obviously, we've seen a lot of plot divergences in the first game. Mm -hmm. It deals a lot with the theme of fate. Yeah. Uh, you see certain characters pop up way before you would normally see them in the original game. Some characters who should die don't. Yeah, That's some some characters who who should live are implied to have died, and then thankfully didn't die. Yeah, uh, but like it, it was really like it's it's. Re it's from Rebirth that they can, after sowing the seeds in Remake, they can really start to maybe divulge or uh, diverge, sorry, from from major plot points that yeah. happened yeah. in the original. I think they'll still hit on the big stuff, yeah. and it will generally follow the same course. But I really do think that certain characters' fates may may be different this time around. Yeah, mm. that's fascinating, especially for like the the people that have played the original and you know the diehard fans, uh, you know, yourself. Mm. And um, it's it just gives an extra reason, an extra like incentive to to try out the the remake and rebirth as well. And yeah, what is going to be different? Because I'm even more intrigued than that. Now, now I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I'm glad that I, I played through the original. Mm. <laughs> and I'm going to finish that at some point. Yes, mm. that's some the point spirit, soon. James. Some point soon. <laughs> and this, yeah, at some point we'll get to Rebirth. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm, I'm even more intrigued now. The, the whole, um, so you sort of uh, alluded to this, Ashton, the, uh, they called Whispers? Oh, I'm the Ghosties, mm. yeah. yeah. They're in, lot, they're in Remake a lot, and I just assumed they were in the original game as well, but I was no. informed that yeah. they are not. Um, and <laughs> they crazy. have a really interesting like implication almost. It's kind of they're trying to keep the story to how it was. Yeah, like the sacred timeline. Yeah, oh, exactly. Cool. They keep that's very they at least keep that's, showing it's up. Never, it's, it's never, never confirmed. stated, yeah, but it's, implied, like, it's yeah, heavily yeah. implied. They kind of keep showing up at moments where something yeah. happens in the remake that is different from mm. the original or, you know, vice versa. And it's kind of interesting. Oh, and it that. kind of comes a bit to an end, towards mm. the end of remake. Yeah. Um, we might see them again. Mm -hmm. in Rebirth we're not sure maybe they have been defeated and we won't see them maybe no. this is a, no, a new timeline if it were and yeah. there's things that will happen that are different and we won't see the Whispers again because they've failed their job of keeping it to the timeline so we'll have to see if they appear again I'm not sure I'm so interested in this because yeah. it's it's not a, like they could have just said oh we're, we're remaking Final Fantasy 7 we're mm -hmm. making it a trilogy and uh, mm. we're just going to take some creative liberties and change some things up you yeah. know a bit like the oh, the Resi remakes that we've had in mm. recent years mm. you know where where items are in different places monsters uh, monsters are in different places yeah. just to keep players on their toes change things up a bit but the fact that they've actually made the the changes part of the narrative yeah, like yeah. that, that it's it self-aware yeah. that like that maybe That's and this clever. this is this is a theory yeah. and this this could not be the case so grain <laughs> of salt but this is just a this is just me <laughs> proving how interested i am in this that maybe the big bad is aware of what happened in the sacred timeline and mm -hmm. is actively trying to change things wow. potentially i mean that's this is just stuff that's, that's floating around online, but but yeah. certainly at, at uh, like guaranteed, these whispers are are desperately trying to keep mm. things the way they were. Yes, but as we can see with the inclusion of Zach, yeah. things are Didn't not work, the way it? they it's, were. No. Yeah. What's so we we do not know. Um, one thing we do know though is that we're going to meet several new big characters, mm. don't we? That uh, you're not aware of, but I'm aware of. Characters from people's <laughs> past, mm -hmm. the uh, the various players in the party, and uh, you know when we're going to these big new environments like Nibelheim and the Gold Saucer, there are certainly big players yeah. who exist there too, and I'm excited to see them brought mm -hmm. up to date. And uh, yeah. you know we can see them in 2024 vision, which will be very interesting mm -hmm. and exciting, and how they've adapted those stories as well. Because I think they've said that this game is going to be about 100 hours long. Rebirth. Whoa. There's going to be, or at least there's going to be a hundred hours worth of content, of content. on Rebirth. So the, the the story may not run you that that it's length. It's twenty so hours incredible. of trying to get the mini games. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> We've timed it, Damn and you're going to be doing pull ups for forty five hours. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Anyway, so there's. I think they've got. They've certainly given themselves more, given themselves yeah. more time to focus on some of these characters. And mm. at this point in the original, these characters did have a lot of screen time anyway. But even so. You know, rather than dedicating a, a, 
uh, d maybe a handful of conversations with a character and then dealing with the consequences as in the original there could be whole cutscenes and whole extended periods where you're yeah. you're dealing with the the fallout from those conversations mm. and things and I yeah I'm, I've said it a million times but I'm just I'm really excited to see, yeah. to see what happens because what's, you're not aware Ben what's is different? really excited I'm so excited yeah. I've taken the day off work he has I'm going to works. I'm going to play it when it comes out I'm very <laughs> nice. very excited mm. <laughs> ah who else is exciting? Go on. What? New party members. Yeah. Oh, I mean, can we... Is it, is it spoilery to say? I think we should we, say... Uh, we can say oh, they're in the, the trailers, right? We can say who they are, yeah. but we, we should, we should exactly. obscure... Exactly, we're not going to go details. The, the, mm. Yeah, the information of them or how they join yeah. the party. So, I mean, spoiler alert, there's a Sid in Final there's Fantasy. There's a Sid? Sid? I know. Cool. Uh, who could have seen I this I hope coming? he's voiced so, by Ralph Innocent so, in this one as well. <laughs> no. uh, his gravelly voice in Final Fantasy 16 was phenomenal. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, man. Clive. Um, <laughs> that's a bad impression. Uh, I, that, would, that would be worth it. Um, yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, so we got Sid and we got Vincent Valentine. The, cool um, name, yeah. very cool Vinny name. Vinny Valentine. Yeah, he's also had his own spin-off game on the on the PS2 years and years oh. ago. Uh, so mm. you can, you know, nice. he's a he's a big deal. People so, love yeah. him. He's a cool character. Mm. He's got a really cool character design as well. I mean, both mm. of them do. They're they're quite iconic in how yeah. they look. And uh, yeah, you'll I, love them. Oh, I, I'm you'll be a big fan. I, think I, I, I hope we get to see that it, cat but, again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yes! Oh, we oh, got to yeah. see a cat right at the end of remake. Mm -hmm. It was a cat wearing a crown. Yeah. Or oh, it's a big, it's a big marshmallow thing with a cat on top yeah. of it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We like we saw it be like what the thing that <laughs> happened. But then I was like, "Who's that?" And then we moved on, and I was like, "Who's that? <laughs> who's, who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Where's the cat, <laughs> please?" That, so there's a few ways to pronounce this character's mm -hmm. name. For the longest time, I thought it was Kate Sith. Mm. Yeah. Apparently, that's not right. It's Kate She if you're pronouncing it the Irish way. Right. But we're going to cool. get a, d a definitive ruling when this game well, comes yeah, out and, I mean, and the character introduces <laughs> itself. Yeah. Unless they all avoid saying uh, their the name. name the whole like, time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's you, Marshmallow <laughs> Cat. Oh, <Hello>, lovely <laughs> friend. <laughs> lovely hey, to uh, see you. Yeah. How? Yeah. Hmm. So I don't know for sure if that, because uh, that character is in this in this game, in mm, Rebirth. Yeah. I don't know for sure if it will become a party member in this yeah. game, uh, but it's, it certainly does in the Either original at, one, at some point. I'm yeah. excited to hang out with it. Yeah, I <laughs> bet it's gonna be absurd. Yeah. I hope it has a really annoying yeah. voice. Uh, oh God, it is. <laughs> <gonna> hey, <laughs> listen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, uh. So, We've already talked about the the whispers, mm. and uh, if they're going to show up again, I have a feeling that they will. You think? Yeah. I think so. Okay. Because things are different. And yeah. And I wonder if this has got me so intrigued. This whole part, yeah. like, oh, different timelines. This like, is I one of the that. things yeah. I'm most interested about. Is like not only just seeing how the game is has been brought up to date but mm. also like what's going to be different because yeah. understandably you know fans of the original might feel a, a little protective over it and that's com mm. that's but completely it still exists well that's the thing right the and this preserves it as well this preserves it and saying like well that part happens but this is happening because that part is mm. still canon mm. it's so, a crude comparison yeah, I, but I, it's it's like when you play a rom hack of of like a pokemon game and <laughs> like it's it's yeah. you've got you've still got the original that you can play but you can play through it again but something slightly different and it's mm. it's new and it gives a new spin on it and i i love it like i'm i'm all all on board i don't honestly mm. i don't care what they do who they kill mm. who they I keep alive i'm just i want to be surprised and and i'm i'm very mm. intrigued by that yeah. uh, but there's there's a couple of other things that are that are going to be new to this game, mm -hmm. uh, the the combat system has apparently been refined further from from where it yeah, was originally. Yeah, they've used some of Final Fantasy 16's mechanics. Yeah, because that was more of a sort of action RPG, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, um, and this apparently learns from that and also uh, from remake and sort of evolves it slightly. So it's it's. It's a bit more fluid and uh, perhaps a bit faster. It may, I mean, we'd hope a bit more intuitive as well mm. if, if you struggle with, with managing things on the fly. Uh, but certainly, I got it eventually. Well, yeah. It just took me a little bit. You'll be it's a pro a, when you get it. It's in a quite a yeah. unique kind of combat system mm. that Final Fantasy has. It's not like many other games, mm. apart from maybe like Kingdom Hearts, but yeah. they're very similar. Um, and it's something that you, once you get your head around, it makes total sense, but it can take a little bit to kind of click in your mind yeah so Wasn't if you don't like it in the beginning just persevere because that's what i did then it made total sense <laughs> after a little bit but was yeah. it uh, so it sort of blends out you know like uh, pausing and a bit of turn-based sort of stuff but obviously very action heavy as well mm. could you in theory play it entirely 
you know, using the pause menu and stuff? You, they've, they've added, certainly with I the original, and they sure. may have developed it further yeah. for this. I'm not entirely sure, but they seem to, they've, they've implied that they have for sure. Mm. Uh, but you could, they added like a couple of different modes where there was one that was just truly dynamic where you managed it on the fly. And then yeah. there was one That's where cool. it's slowed down or paused for decisions if you, if you wanted to, because yeah. you've still got that, you know, you've got to build up your, your bar before mm. you can oh, attack yeah, again like and the longer you leave it yeah exactly yeah, yeah. as, as the, the active time battle that's the one yeah the longer you leave it um, the the more powerful mm. a move that you can pull off one of which which is new in this game is tag team moves cool where you yeah. and another party member can attack together if you wait a little longer and you know execute more of your fight power love that um, Very good. but uh, I you can't play it as as a turn based game, yeah, mm. but they have made concessions to allow for you to have more of that approach rather than the, mm. you know all yeah, on being the fly able to pause kind of thing. is is super good if it's getting like too crazy and then mm. you know you you mentioned like you know struggling with the menus start, anyway. I would be yeah. a bit. Mm. I don't start panic yeah. magicking and <laughs> <laughs> fireball. Oh no! Fireball. Oh no! Too much going on. Yeah. The final thing I'm really excited for. Yeah. Is the music. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Because hearing the, I can't remember what it's called now. It's like an, it's under the the something something is the name of the song. It was it was in the the uh, the remake, and. It usually plays when you're sort of in the slums and it's the do 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 that one. People will know it. People <laughs> oh, yeah. will know it, I promise. Yeah, I gotta... <laughs> it is it is so it's such a phenomenal piece of music. Mm. And obviously we've heard a lot of battle music already. As we said earlier, there's several pieces of battle music and it and it changes depending on what kind of boss you're facing and stuff. So we're mm. gonna hear more of that. But I'm really excited to hear the music for the new locations and towns that mm. I'll immediately yeah. go, oh my God, it's that song, but it sounds flipping it's amazing. Different. It's, it's so yeah. good. Pure nostalgia hit, isn't it? Yeah. Especially with music, it has like a, a special sort of <laughs> power to mm. do that. Um, yeah. And I mean, you know, I don't even have the, the nostalgia from childhood, but like hearing half of the, the songs there and then hearing the remade versions, they're, they're still mm. just mm. on point. Phenomenal, with a full orchestra. Yeah. Incredible. You know what I don't want? What? Big Evil House. Oh, the no. Hell House. Oh, come on. I don't want to fight the Big Evil House again. <laughs> you weren't again. a fan of the Hell House. The Big no. Evil House. Love me the Big Hell House. I didn't like it. I had to turn the difficulty <laughs> so down. I was playing it on normal and I turned difficulty down because I said like, Big Evil House is too big and evil <laughs> It for looks me. tough. It's like a big boss fight in a remake, right? It is. Yeah. And it changes its... It kicked um, my ass. It changes its like, status affinities oh, on, on the fly in the fight. So it'll be like strong against a certain type of magic and then it'll be weak against it and it'll like cycle right so you need to keep like shuffling what you're doing to do damage to it but you don't do much damage to it you've got to fill that stagger bar (laughs) and then you can do loads of damage to it yeah so I'm hoping I'm hoping we've defeated the one big evil house there's only one hell and there won't be any more big evil in the original you just used to bump into them (laughs) yeah so hopefully hopefully that doesn't happen (laughs) oh I just have a whole village I don't want it (laughs) well Shall we move on to another section now? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> look, look, look. So the one thing that Square Enix keep reiterating with Rebirth is that you don't have to have played any of the other games Mm. to understand what's going on in Rebirth, which I think is really interesting. I think, you know, Remake on its own, you haven't had to play the first game. Mm. And I think given that Remake almost sums up a little bit what happens in the story of Remake and goes off to do something else building on that, I do, I can completely understand why you wouldn't need to play the remake to get into rebirth um however there have been a lot of final fantasy 7 games spin-off things that you should know about so we're just gonna do a quick run through of kind of the catalog of games that have been released surrounding final fantasy 7 Absolutely. One thing I I didn't put on here, actually, obviously, is the original, which we talked mm-hmm. about at the start, that yeah, released yeah. on PS1 and then was ported to PC in 1997, 1998. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, if you do actually want like a, a really good story recap, uh, the I think one of the latest Final Fantasy VII trailers that's about three minutes long yeah. is called The Story So Far. Yeah. Yeah. And we will link to that in the description below uh, in the link dump so you guys can go give that a watch if you if you want to be all caught up before mm-hmm. for Rebirth. But James, uh, tell me what was like the first sort of modern Final Fantasy 
Fantasy VII re-release kind of thing? Um, yeah, so this would be uh, the one that I sort of touched on there. So Final Fantasy VII. Uh, so this came out on various platforms between 2015 and 2020. So mm-hmm. available on the PS4, the Xbox One, the Switch, uh, even on iOS, Android. I know. Phones. Wow. Phones are scary. And uh, <laughs> yeah, on PC as well. <laughs> Terrifying. Mm. Um, so this is basically the original game, but like remastered with some graphical impl- uh, imp- improvements. <laughs> improvements. <laughs> uh, so as we alluded to earlier on, trophies and achievement support, um, which can be a blessing and a curse if yes. you're going for the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah. what what I found very handy as well, like yeah, me um, too. The uh, the couple of couple of cheat options where um, you know maybe not necessarily just blasting through the battles, but you have an option to like speed up the battles. And because if you just want to play the story, get through that, that's mm-hmm. fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can also speed up um, things from what I remember. And there are a couple of bits and bobs. Yeah, I think one of them um, was that you like you immediately got your limit break. Yeah, uh, and yeah, your health was, was constantly rising as well. So whenever yeah. you took damage, it would shoot. So back it was up. just like keep doing a special move over, yeah. over. <laughs> you could turn off so encounters, uh, mm. and yeah, you could make it run yes. at like super speed oh, as well. So actually, fun. this yeah. might help you with a first playthrough if you want to shoot. Maybe, through. Yeah. Pretty handy, yeah. When I when I played through it, like I, I did a proper playthrough, and then for as I mentioned earlier, like when I wanted to go and do the stuff that I never did before, like find the because mm. there's like legendary weapons for all the mm-hmm. characters. There's like super devilishly hard bosses that are optional yeah. uh, when I wanted to do those yes it's not necessarily in the spirit of things but for like from a completionist perspective of someone who loves the game and just wanted to see it myself yeah, you want these options were actually fantastic and mm-hmm. also they didn't disable trophies for them <laughs> so nice. that was also nice thank Sick. you very much uh, but it was a little while from there until we yeah. got the, the actual remake well it was yeah it was almost like uh, I mean they had to have been making this uh, at that point anyway so it was kind of like a you know, teaser or a warm up sort of thing mm. Uh, on April 2020, yes. we saw Final Fantasy VII Remake, finally, yes. for some people mm. who have been yes. waiting years. Yes. Um, so that came out initially on the PS4. Uh, so this was the the big one from the ground up remake of uh, the first portion of Final Fantasy VII. Uh, so obviously the plan split into three games. This expanded upon the original story um, massively because it sets... Um, it's set during that Midgar section, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, that first section of the original game, um, you know, fleshed out and now just a, a full game in itself. It was a, what, like 40, 50 hours worth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Crazy. Um, yeah. So yeah, mind blowing, staggering. What happened next? They followed that up with uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate, which was the PS5 upgrade that had improved visuals and better load times. I think this is when slash why I dived into remake when I did was because I think it was just after the PS5 upgrade and the DLC which was attached to Integrade came out um, which was called Intermission um, episode Intermission sorry um, which was a DLC that featured Mm -hmm. Yuffie and followed her story which is completely new content um, was never in the original game and Mm -hmm. yeah follows what she's up to in Midgar, when she kind of breaks in and is up to up to no good almost, no. Um, and almost kind of runs not parallel, but you have some slight crossover with our mate Cloud in the DLC, mm. and I I thought the DLC was Your fantastic. Yeah. So I really enjoyed the yeah, DLC. Yeah, they both came out in 2021 for PS5 and PC. Yes, so. mm. this this marked the debut of the of the game outside of of PlayStation systems. Mm-hmm. So it, that one mm. is available on PC if you want to play it there. Uh, from there, I think it was yeah a couple of years ago now, December 2022, we had Crisis Core Final Fantasy was VII really? reunion. Yeah, wow. last year flew by, didn't it? <laughs> That released on PS4, PS5, Switch, Xbox One, Series, and Windows. And this is a comprehensive remaster. I say comprehensive remaster because technically it's not a remake, Mm -hmm. but they did so much to it uh, that it looks like completely different. Yeah. Uh, This, yes, a comprehensive remaster of PSP exclusive Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII from back in the day. The game is a prequel that charts the rise of Zack Fair, who's that guy with the black hair there, who shouldn't Mm. be alive anymore, uh, through Shinra's soldier program. You should be dead! (laughs) Do it here. It charts his rise through Shinra's pr- uh, soldier program, his friendship with Cloud, relationship with Aerith, encounters with Sephiroth, and ultimately the end of his story as shown in the original Final Fantasy VII. Uh, the, this uh, remaster boasts a complete graphical overhaul, an improved battle system, and newly arranged soundtrack. Given the change to Zack's apparent fate in Remake and the decision to remaster and release it now, it's safe to say that the contents of the game could loom large over Rebirth and the remainder of the Remake trilogy. Mm. So Big this deal. was... Uh, 
a sort of out of nowhere remaster. I don't think mm. anyone was expecting yeah. this to get any love because outside of that one and the one that stars uh, Vincent Valentine, who we mentioned earlier, which I think is called Dirge Vidi of Val. Cerberus, I think is what it's oh. called. Yes, you're right. Oh, sick name. Um, that was on, my, that was on my, my boyfriend cheat sheet was Dirge of Cerberus. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it so, means nothing to me. <laughs> so that was a spin-off that released on PSP and PS2 respectively. And neither of those games have really been shown any love ever since. Mm. And so it was an interesting, I think it's, it is of note. Yeah. yeah, it is of note that this game was remastered specifically and released in that period and you know with Zach showing up and mm. the inclusion of Sephiroth in this game and a couple of other elite soldiers who are similar to Sephiroth who don't show up in the original Final Fantasy 7 it could be that something carries across perhaps from there and then of course we've got Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth uh, which is releasing on the 29th of February on PS5 this is a from the ground up remake of the second portion of Final Fantasy 7 beginning with the party's escape from Midgar and running up until who knows? Ooh. We're not actually sure where this game is going to no. conclude. Because no. uh, I would like to think, because they haven't split it disc by disc, because the third disc of Final Fantasy VII, the original, isn't actually that long. Mm. You still oh. get to run around the entire planet, and there might be new things that, that are happening if yeah. you go to certain places. But really, it's like the end game. That is, that is where the game finishes. Mm. Yeah. So... Who knows? It might be that they've just selected a chunk of Was stuff from the second disc. Where the then, first disc mm. ended... Escaping from Midgar. Yeah, and then... I don't believe so, no. So we're already... Oh, we're sticking out on the first disc maybe to halfway through the second disc. Yeah. Until I might have to knows? double check that. I can't yeah. actually I can't actually remember off the top of my head uh, where the discs end. But either way, I don't imagine they're splitting it by disc. And no. I'd like to think that whatever they do focus on in this game, however far they go up to, uh, it is sort of expanded upon in a similar way to the first game. Mm -hmm. So we get lots yeah. more fleshed out stuff and so on. Mm. Um, and just in case you do think that you may have time to, to tackle Remake before Rebirth <laughs> comes out, again, Complete. not that you need to, uh, we're going to take this moment to promote the fact that there is a twin pack available on PS5 oh, yeah. during the pre-order window where you get Remake at no extra cost. You've got enough time. Nice. If you want If you want to squeeze in Remake between now and Rebirth without, you know, you don't have to, but if you want to, mm. then I think you've got just enough time. You might, might actually do that. I might do just that. Pre-order yeah. the <laughs> pre-order the the rebirth, and uh, we'll you see. you have to pre-order we'll the see. twin pack version to get to get yeah. remake as well. But okay. that was just a brief overview of the as, as of, of the various Final Fantasy VII games. As we yeah. said, you know there there are other spin-offs and there's other media. There's the Advent Children movie. There's various mm -hmm. books. There's mobile mm -hmm. games and stuff. But really, that is like that's the core stuff. The sort of journey that's led us to Final Fantasy yeah. VII Rebirth. Mm. Playing any of that stuff is completely optional. I would personally recommend it at some point because I think they're phenomenal games. Mm. Uh, but again, you can hop straight into Rebirth sight unseen yeah. and still have a fantastic time there's a segue yes, there's a segue there's a cat that indeed. rides a marshmallow Probably. so like yeah. what do you what do you actually want not much more than that <laughs> I wouldn't have thought game. Get it's out the of perfect then. game right there yeah. it's time for our closing argument everybody yes mm -hmm. why should people try Final Fantasy 7 for the first time well I think I'm going to go first because okay. I jumped into Final Fantasy 7 at the remake, having never played the original. And I think that Final Fantasy VII, as has been said since it came out, is a fantastic game. The characters all have such interesting stories and are very likable characters. Mm. You know when sometimes you play a game and mm. you're like, I'm playing the game, I don't really like any of the characters. I feel like I'm just, just hanging out with it. them. Yeah. They annoy me. <laughs> I I never felt annoyed with any of the characters. In fact, mm. like I say, I didn't want to leave any of them in my pocket, as you were, when I was traveling around. <laughs> yeah, keep them um, in my pocket, oh yeah, my God. in the back. <laughs> um, and they're all likable. Everyone has their own stuff going on. Mm. The the graphics look amazing. Yeah. The story, mm. from just my small taste into the remake, is already brilliant. And I am so excited to find out what happens next. And I feel so silly that I don't know what's going to happen next. Because everyone's exciting. like... I'm really glad like, that you're Ooh. going in yeah. this way, though. But I'm That's really so cool. excited. And I've been dodging it like a madman. <laughs> Um, but I think if you are thinking of it and if you're like, oh, mm, don't know if I'm going to like it, I think you will. I think mm. that it is a brilliant game. Mm. Well, having not played the new one, but 
the other one was so I'm taking an example from that um, I think it's a brilliant game I think you have a great time and you'll enjoy yourself you'll laugh you'll cry yeah. <laughs> you'll dance along to cool moments you will literally have your jaw drop to the floor at various moments and I think it's just a brilliant a game to jump into and you can ride yeah. a segue exactly <laughs> yeah. exactly yeah James amazing James. Um, yeah I mean sh- sh- probably echo uh, those sentiments really but like from from my perspective you know playing the original but seeing all of the uh all of the improvements there um the storyline is just phenomenal it's one of the best stories like maybe the best some people argue of final fantasy um and that's a high bar to hold anyway mm. um yeah we've even mentioned like the the reason why we've had so many different uh, extra games and spin-offs to flesh out that story as well it's so good just the world is so good um and then you've got you know another reason for trying this for the first time if you were put off like if you like me you were just ah well i'll get to it eventually okay whatever maybe it's just because it's too old maybe it's because uh you you don't vibe with that sort of uh classic rpg sort mm. of jrpg setup um you know turn-based combat and everything uh the combat's a lot more actiony now it's a lot more snazzy visually um it performs like just crazy good from what i've seen um yeah and it's it's just got that extra just high-end sort of production as well so not only is the story good but you've got the way it's sort of presented is fantastic too mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. yeah definitely worth trying i mean i'm, I'm gonna definitely give uh, yeah. remake a go and then get to this one i think i mean if you've gone 25 mm. years of your life and you've avoided the story of final fantasy 7 oh. and any spoilers i hate to break it to you but i think when this next one comes out we might struggle yeah so Good luck. Um, bets are off. <laughs> all bets are off so i think if you've been like oh I'll get round to it you know i know some mm. good stuff happens i'm like i think i'll do it now quick yeah, quickly probably should. go on quick. yeah <laughs> it is one of uh, the greatest yeah. games ever made yeah. Uh, it is widely lauded oh, wow. from its music to its story, as you said, to like mm. the, the characters and just how groundbreaking it was back in the day for presenting a game like that. It was like that and Metal Gear Solid were, were sort of, they showed the way to the future mm-hmm. of games. Like, yeah. oh my God, we can have this. Like this is possible. Cinematic yeah, like yeah. the FMV cutscenes, the pre-rendered backgrounds, and now it being remade and looking as gorgeous as it is and playing as well as it does and the music and the way things are changing as, as well. Like it's, you owe it to yourself to play and experience this game and the the remake trilogy with rebirth coming out in just a few weeks is like the prime way to do that there are lots of other methods to experience final fantasy 7 as we've talked about but we're here to talk about final fantasy 7 rebirth here today and you owe it to yourself to play it it's mm-hmm. got segues in it and uh, <laughs> there's so many incredible moments that are, that is going to be coming in this game and even if you do know you do know the spoilers and you do know what's happened in this game, mm. there's a good chance that it's going to defy some expectations. Oh, yeah. Some mm. things are it probably going to be a little different. different. You're going to get a different experience than you might already be aware of. Play mm. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. It's going to be really, really good. I can't wait. Mm-hmm. I'm so excited. Mm-hmm. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me. That's okay. Thank we are so glad we VII. could let you talk about how much yes. you love Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. For, uh, for for allowing me to, to do that. And thank <laughs> that you to Square fun. Enix as well. <laughs> yes, thank you very for much. For sponsoring you. this podcast. There is a link in the description. Please click it to find out more about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Uh, the game releases on PS5 on the 29th of February, so not long to wait now. Go and get it. It's going to be bloody great. I promise. Yes. That's a promise from me. I haven't actually played it yet. A Ben Potter promise. Ben I'm, I don't approval. make those promises lightly, no. okay? Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Go check it out now. Thank you so much for wish- wishing slash watching, everybody. Thank <laughs> you, you so it. much for listening slash watching. Thank you everyone. very much. We will see you very soon. Bye! Bye.